welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to replace a failed or failing drive in a SoftRate array in SoftRate 8 for Mac. Before we start, we'll be using SoftRate 8 on Sonoma in this example, but the basic instructions should also apply to other versions and OSs. It's recommended that you replace the failed drive in your RAID array with one that's the same size or larger. While RAID volumes offer a level of data redundancy, there's always a small chance that there may be some damage to the volume's data during the rebuilding process. Because of this, we recommend backing up your data to a separate drive using your preferred method before performing this procedure. Now, let's get started. If there's an issue with the drive, SoftRaid will put up a warning dialog box stating the issue when the RAID device is attached to your computer. If you have email notifications set up, you'll also get an email with a description of the problem. Finally, even if you didn't see either of those, you'll still have an indication on the computer that the RAID is connected to as the SoftRaid icon in the menu bar will be yellow instead of blue. At this point, you'll want to back up any irreplaceable files to a separate drive just in case. Once we've backed up our data to a separate drive and disconnected it, we can then begin the repair process. There are two reasons to replace a drive. It's either predicted to fail or it has already failed. The process is slightly different for each one. To find out what the nature of the problem is, open up SoftRaid. The warning dialog will likely pop up again with the warning information. There will also be information in the SoftRaid window itself. If a disk is predicted to fail, there will be a warning in the disks column on the left-hand side in the panel for the drive. If the disk is not being recognized at all, there will be a warning on the right-hand side that a disk is missing in a RAID. Now that we know what the trouble is, we can go through the steps necessary to resolve it. If a drive is predicted to fail but is still readable, there are a number of steps to take to ensure your data's integrity. The first thing we need to do is determine where the failing drive in the array is located. Click on the drive listed as failing in the left column, then go to the disk menu and select Blink Light. The drive's indicator light should blink, indicating which one needs replacement. In our case, it's drive C. Mark the location of the drive down so we remember which one needs replacing later. Then, just click on the drive in the SoftRaid window to stop the blinking. Now that we know which disk needs replacing, we recommend validating the data on the RAID volume. This will check all of the blocks of data across all the drives in the RAID to make sure it's all intact. Select the RAID volume with the failing disk on the right-hand column, then go up to the Volume menu and select Validate. You'll be asked for confirmation that you want to do this, and then for your username and password. Enter those and validation will continue. This may take a while. Once validation has been completed, we can then safely remove the failing drive from the array. With the RAID volume still selected on the right, go to the Volume menu and select Remove Disk. You'll get a dialog box listing all the drives in the array. Go down the list until you find the drive marked as failing. With that drive selected, click the Remove button. You'll be asked for confirmation and once again be asked for your username and password. SoftRaid will then separate the drive from the array. This may take a while. Once SoftRaid has removed the drive from the array, go ahead and unmount the RAID volume and shut down your RAID device. You can then remove the failing drive and replace it with a new one according to the instructions for your enclosure. If a disk is not being seen at all, we can use the SoftRaid application to help determine the drive that's malfunctioned. On the right-hand side of the SoftRaid window, select the volume that's degraded. You will see green lines connecting the volume to the drive seen. Command or shift click each of these drives to select them all. Then, go to the Disks menu and select Blink Disk Lights. 
On your RAID device, all the recognized drives should have their indicators flashing. By process of elimination, the one that isn't flashing is the drive that needs replacing. In this case, it's drive C. Mark down which drive needs replacing, then just click on one of the drives on the left to turn the blinking off. Go back to the right-hand side and make sure the RAID volume is selected again. Then, go to the Volume menu and select Remove Missing Disk. You'll be asked to confirm and then to enter your username and password. The drive will then be removed from the list of the disks in the array. Finally, unmount the volume and shut down your RAID device. You can now replace the bad drive we noted earlier according to your enclosure's instructions. Now that you've removed the old drive from your enclosure and have replaced it with a new one, reconnect the enclosure and turn it on. You'll probably get an error message warning you that the soft rate volume is missing a disk. That's okay, we'll be fixing that in just a moment. You may also get a message about a disk not being readable. Just select Ignore since we'll be addressing that in SoftRaid as well. On the left side of the SoftRaid window, you'll see the new drive listed. It'll have a question mark over the lower right corner of its icon. Just like when you created the RAID, you'll want to certify this new drive to help contribute to the safety and integrity of the data stored in your RAID. To certify the drive, select it on the left column, then go to the Disk menu and select Certify. A dialog box will appear with a short description of the certification process and options to change some parameters. However, we recommend using the default settings. Go ahead and click Certify to begin the process. You'll be asked to confirm and then to enter your username and password. Enter those and click OK and the process will begin. As you can see, certification takes a while. While we usually suggest you let the certification run its course uninterrupted, if for some reason you need to temporarily stop the certification to work on something else, you can. Simply select the drive you're certifying, right-click, and select Cancel. To start again, just perform the same steps as you did before, except this time, you'll be given a dialog asking if you want to resume the previously interrupted certification or start over. Once certification has completed, you'll get a dialog box with the results of the certification, including any errors the drive may have returned. Now, we need to initialize the drive with SoftRaid. Select the new drive, then go up to the disk menu and select Initialize. You'll get a dialog box asking you to confirm initialization and again be asked for your username and password. Enter those and click OK. After a couple of moments, the drive will be initialized for SoftRaid and we're ready to add it back into the RAID volume. In the Volumes list on the right, select the RAID array that we want to repair. Then, go to the Volume menu and select Add Disk. You'll get a pop-up window with all disks that are available to add to the array. In most cases, it'll only be the one you just added. When the disk is selected, it will blink the light on the enclosure to confirm the drive being added. Click Add and Confirm. Once the drive has been added, you'll get a notice that the drive is out of sync and an automatic rebuild has begun. You can dismiss this window. At this point, all that's left is to let the volume rebuild itself, which SoftRaid can do in the background. If necessary, you can still use the RAID volume, though performance may be slightly reduced during the rebuild process. If you need to, you can even shut down your computer and the rebuild will resume once you restart. If your volume is taking an exceedingly long time to rebuild, you can try setting your RAID's optimization to one that has a higher rebuild priority. Select your RAID in the Volumes column on the right, then go to the Volume menu, all the way down to Optimize 4, and select either Workstation or Server, with the latter of the two having higher system priority and therefore the fastest. Then, it's just a matter of waiting. Once rebuilding has completed, you can go back to using your soft rate volume as usual.